expectation is you're going to deal with questions around those issues. Right. Yeah. 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 So if I get asked any questions about that, though, I doubt they want to ask me questions about that. I can just talk about the health care impact, of the health impact of the sexual violence. Sure. Sure. Uh, yeah, we do it where that would be happening. Yeah. Coalition Against Domestic and Sexual Violence, which is a statewide network of 14 member programs that provide services and supports to victims of domestic violence, sexual assault, and stalking. And I know some of you are here today for reasons other than the issues of domestic and sexual violence and stalking, and I would just ask that you not interrupt this press conference because these issues are really important and we really appreciate the opportunity to bring some focus and attention to these issues. The member programs of the coalition assist over 13,000 victims a year in the state, so we know it's a problem that affects many people. And the troubled economy is having a continued effect on our member crisis centers across the state. Yes, ma'am. Congressman, I'm a representative. I represent six towns in your district. And I'm also a national coordinator for Women's Advocacy Group and an EMT, so I very much understand and appreciate the work these women are doing. My concern, however, is in talking about funding issues, um, I have a lot of constituents that are very upset. They have been unable to get their questions answered. They're losing their homes. They've lost their jobs. They can't feed their families. This money comes from taxpayers. Where would you take the money from in order to fund this? What takes a little priority to you? And, and how do you intend on taking up these, these funding issues? Many of these folks would voluntarily give their money to, to this organization and many other worthy organizations if they actually could afford to pay their bills these days. How would you handle this and where would you take the money from? Well, um, we face a lot of difficult choices in a stubborn recession. As you know, the Recovery and Reinvestment Act um, has um, starting to make a real impact on dealing with a stubborn recession. There is no doubt that um, given the depth of the recession and the severity of the financial crisis uh, that developed, the um, federal government has had to step in to stabilize the economy and help rebuild uh, the working economy for the 21st century. So I've supported uh, programs to help make sure that um, uh, the, uh, that the middle class has tax cuts, that the states have been able to address um, uh, needs of people with Medicaid and not fire people, and to support infrastructure investment, both new and old, in the Recovery and Reinvestment Act. And at the same time, there are always difficult uh, budgetary and policy choices to make about funding important social priorities. What I'm here today to say is that I believe that supporting the women who are victims of domestic sexual violence and abuse is an important priority that we all share as a society. Uh, the impacts uh, on all of us of uh, the domestic and sexual violence and abuse that we have heard about are important for all of us to deal with. So there are many difficult choices to make. I'm here to say that I believe this is a high priority and I believe that uh, the acts should be reauthorized and fully funded. Um, at the same time, it's important to be fiscally responsible, and I, that's where the tension comes between my colleagues who are on the Appropriations Committee, um, facing authorization of a number of different programs and making difficult choices. Um, my colleagues may not always agree with me about my priorities. I think this is an important social priority. Great. So let's take uh, one more question. that if we had more resources and more staff, we would be able to do more effective work with everybody who does call us. 
Great. Thank you all very Thank much you. for coming. Thank you. Well, I've been doing forums and speaking to thousands of people all over the state while I've been here. I've done a variety of forums of different kinds, um, whether it's in parking lots. I spoke to 6,000 people the other day uh, with, uh, with the AARP in a town hall forum about health care. My schedule, I think, was published in the Monitor today, and I'll be continuing to talk with my constituents in a variety of forums over um, over the period of time that we're dealing with healthcare. I'm familiar with that. It was an AARP event, but your constituents, your general populace, would like to meet with you in a town hall setting where all are welcome, where all can ask questions and have their concerns answered. When would you be scheduling something like that? I've, as I said, I've done all kinds of different forums, and I'm speaking to my constituents all the time. We get 3,000 letters a week that we answer on the uh, teletown hall I did, there were 6,000 people. I would have had to bring everybody into the Verizon Center to speak to them. I'm going to a variety of different kinds to make sure that all the concerns of my constituents are met. There's no one place I could go to meet all my constituents because I represent 700,000 people. Um, uh, but there are, there are, everybody uh, is concerned about health care. There are common concerns that we have been addressing all the way through in all these uh, different forms, and I believe that uh, it's important to be open and accessible, and I always have been and always will be. I have a question about health care. We have another appointment that we need to get to. So, so thank you all for coming, and uh, I'm on my way. See you all. Quickly. Yeah. Can I have a question for you? Actually, you and I had a discussion recently outside you didn't of her my question. We had a good discussion, no, and I look forward to a, another one away. at the right time. You walked away. <laughs>